Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John Math Tube. This is lesson number 2 in 3D geometry and in this lesson we learn about straight lines. And to be exact, we are going to learn about straight lines in the three dimensional plane. Okay, so in lesson number 1, we learned that every line in the three dimension is associated with a concept called direction ratios or in other words if the direction ratios are given it is somewhat like or kind of like analogous to the concept of slope in two dimension and then we learned about the concept of direction cosines that is nothing but projection of one unit of the line segment okay now look at this suppose you know one fixed point on the line so look at this i'm going to tell you the minimum requirements suppose you know one fixed point on the line and i'm going to call the point x1 comma y1 comma z1 so we have a straight line and i took one fixed point on the line now for the locus purpose i hope you remember the word locus from your younger classes um, you can imagine this line, not only line, uh, let it be plane, let it be sphere, let it be cone. Every system is made up of infinite number of points. Every system is made up of infinite number of points. And we believe that there will be a geometric uh, condition or something like a moving point which can create it. Just imagine uh, if a moving point runs in such a way that it keeps or it maintains a constant distance from distance from another point just imagine we have a moving point in such a way that it always maintains a constant distance from another point and this point moves and moves and moves and moves see we get a circle similarly uh, there are some complex relations we get ellipse we get hyperbola, we get parabola, you learned all these things in your plus one plus two. Okay, now look at this. Now I am talking about a point moving in the three dimension. You can imagine a honeybee or something, but it is moving according to some pattern. And that point is called the locus point. Anyway, for the locus purpose, I am going to take a moving point x comma y comma z. So remember, A is fixed. You cannot... Uh, change the position of A but if you ask me the position of P it can be anywhere on the line or in other words P creates the line P is everywhere can this point be P yes can this point be P yes can this point be P yes but P can never be a point outside the line okay so look at this what are the what are the given things okay you're given a fixed point and then we take uh, the locus point locus point means we are considering all the points in the line okay now in lesson one we learned that every line corresponds to direction ratios direction cosines etc anyway uh, for the time being assume that we know the direction ratios of the line and let's call them A, B, C. So look at this. These are the things which will be given or these are the things which should be given if you want to write the equation of a line in Cartesian form. Okay, so we have a line. A fixed point is given X1, Y1, Z1. And the direction ratios of the line is also known. And for locus purpose, we take a point x comma y comma z. Now remember, the locus point can be anywhere. Or locus point represents all the points in the line. Or you can imagine a line is made up of infinite number of points. Okay, those who watched lesson number one will remember that given two points, given any two points, you will be able to write the direction ratios. So, the direction ratios will be x minus x1, y minus y1, z minus z1. 
Now, one more thing that we discussed in lesson number one. Look at this. The direction ratios are given to be ABC. And we calculated the direction ratios to be X minus X1, Y minus Y1, Z minus Z1. In lesson number one, we learned that you calculate direction ratios of the same line from different points or from different means. They are multiples. That means they are proportional. So we get the relation X minus X1 by A is equal to Y minus Y1 by B is equal to Z minus Z1 by C. Now look at this. This is the Cartesian equation of a line in three dimensional plane. And this form has a name. It is called the symmetric form. So what you call this form? Symmetric form. And I think from uh, proportions, ratio and proportions in your high school or very small classes, you learned that if you have something like A by A1 equal to B by B1 equal to C by C1, you can call it to be some constant. I'm going to call the constant as T. You can use S, you can use lambda, you can use mu, it's up to you. Anyway, you have to by heart this. This is the Cartesian equation of a line. And it is called the symmetric form of the line. So for one last time, I'll, put, I'll make it very clear. What are the minimum things that we need to write the equation of a line? Okay. The direction ratios and one fixed point. And of course, we take the locus point to be x, y, z. And this is the equation of the line. Okay. Now what we do is, we are going to manipulate this equation. We are going to manipulate and we are going to convert this into the parametric form. So, my plan is I am going to equate this and t. So, I have x minus x1 by a is equal to t. Similarly, y minus y1 by b is equal to c. This is called proportionality constant. And z minus z1 by what you call C is equal to T. And this gives me the connection X is equal to X1 plus A into T, Y is equal to Y1 plus A B into T, and Z equal to Z1 plus C into T. Okay, wait a minute. Do you still remember who are this X comma Y comma Z? Look at this. I told you initially X, Y, Z represents every point on the line. X, Y, Z represents every point on the line. So, look at this format. This is the parametric form because I am able to access every point on the line with the help of the parameter T. Okay, if you want to understand more clearly, let's think like this. If I plug in T is equal to 1, I will get a particular value for x, y, z. If I plug in t is equal to 100, I will get another point. But that point will belong to the line. If I put t equal to minus 1 by 2, okay, I will get another point on the line. If I put t equal to 0.0001, I will get another point on the line. So, the beauty of this form is, this format generates every point on the line or we are able to access each and every point on the line using the parametric form. I will repeat, using the parametric form, we are able to access each and every point on the line. So, the second important point, this is called the parametric form of the line. So, note it, the first form is called Cartesian form or symmetric form. And this form is called the parametric form of the line. And this is one of the most, most, most useful forms um, to tackle many problems in your syllabus. Especially when we try to find the point of intersection of a line and a plane. Or when we try to find the point of intersection of a cone and a line. This form will be very useful for you. And this is called the parametric form. Okay, now one more form uh, that is called vector form. 
the vector form of straight line actually comes in the IOE syllabus but it is in another chapter in most of the textbooks that you use. Anyway in vector form what happens is first of all you have to understand when we learn vectors um, we do not think about points as points ok that might be confusing you look at this in two dimensional system let us say this point will be called 6 comma 2 that means I have to move 6 units in the x direction and 2 units up but in vector geometry in vector geometry this point will be called a position vector what will you call that point a position vector is the same thing but the interpretation the way they interpret will be position vector that means the point will be connected to the origin and it will be made into a vector from origin to the point and the vector will be 6i 6i means there is 6 unit movement in the x direction plus 2j 2j means there is 2 units movement up in the y direction so remember in 3 dimensional geometry we have points for example 3 comma 1 comma 5 but the same thing when we learn vectors we will ask for the position vector of the point. So look at this in three dimension I will take the locus point x y z to be the position vector op and that will be x i plus y j plus z k. So remember this position vector represents every point oh sorry every position vector of points on the line it is a little bit confusing but look at this what does P stand for P stands for every point on the line it is a representative of every point on the line similarly in vector geometry OP stands for every position vector on the line because point will become position vector so look at this this is how the picture looks like see this is op this is op this is op i told you op is a moving vector okay anyway this op will be called r and r is xi plus yj plus zk that is r is given by do you remember we found the values of x y z earlier here x1 plus at times i plus y1 plus bt times j plus z1 plus ct times k and that is r is equal to x1 i plus y1 j plus z1 k plus t times ai plus bj plus ck ok that is it that is the theory for straight lines so look at this this is called the symmetric form so the most important thing if you want to write the equation of a line they should give you one fixed point the direction ratios and this is called the symmetric form and this is called the parametric form and this one is called the vector form uh, you have to understand uh, you, you can write one more formula that is if two lines with direction ratios a1 b1 c1 and a2 b2 c2 are given if two lines with direction ratios a1 b1 c1 and a2 b2 c2 are given then the angle between the lines is given by a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 the whole divided by root under a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square times a2 square plus b2 square plus c2 square so this is a formula which you learned in class 12 with derivation ok you have to understand one more thing if the lines become perpendicular then cos theta will become 0 cos 90 degrees 0 so the numerator becomes 0 uh, that is a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 will be 0 and lines to become parallel we discussed yesterday itself 
the direction ratios will be multiples, proportional. It will be like A1 by A2 equal to B1 by B2 equal to C1 by C2. Okay, so please make sure you write all these formulae. The most important is symmetric form and parametric form. Um, in the engineering uh, question papers, I have very rarely seen problems related to vector. But remember, every semester, uh, I have seen that they keep on changing one or two questions. So, they may ask. So, please be prepared for it. So, I will be back with uh, another video. And in that video, we will be discussing the theory for planes. So, till then, bye.